Welcome to Shaw, the Sound Healers Association, founded by Jonathan Goldman in 1982, bringing education and awareness of the use of sound and music for healing and transformation. Shaw features presentations by founding pioneers in the modern sound healing field, and we have a sound healing directory allowing you to list your work or find practitioners and teachers. There's a monthly online meeting, a blog, a fast resource of articles, and much more. Shaw, the Sound Healers Association, is dedicated to bringing harmony to the world of sound. Okay, here we go, and uh, we're jumping in now. And again, I'm Steve Farrell with Humanities Team. I'm here in Boulder, Colorado. I live near my dear friend, uh, Jonathan Goldman and his wife, Andy. And it's my pleasure to be here just to, just to introduce Jonathan and, uh, and Andy as this program starts. So, uh, and of course, this is a, a sound, a satsang, and it's a monthly program now that Humanities Team is really grateful to be producing each and every month with Jonathan and Andy. So thanks for being with us. I think you're gonna have a fantastic time. Let me just uh, wanna read a brief introduction here as we get started. So Jonathan and Andy Goldman are a powerful pair in the world of conscious living and sound healing. Jonathan is an internationally recognized authority, pioneer and author in sound healing. Andy is a licensed psychotherapist who utilizes holistic treatment and sound healing. Both are highly respected leaders in the sound healing and spiritual music community. Andy and Jonathan have co-written two books together, Chakra Frequencies and The Humming Effect. And uh, again, I'll just share uh, when we came out a moment ago, Jonathan and I were, were sharing that sound healing is really taking off as it should because it is, as we're creating conscious living in the world, sound healing is, is a big role. Uh, it, it's an incredibly useful device. And uh, you're looking at the man here, Jonathan Goldman, who got this whole thing started, was, was called to it at an early age, and hooray, uh, thank God he, he was, because uh, look where sound healing is today. And my pleasure, Jonathan, to uh, turn this over to you. Uh, Steve, thank you so much, and hello, everyone. It is the September Sound South Sang. I am Jonathan Goldman. And I'm Andy Goldman, and we are so delighted to be with all of you tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. And I want to say a special thank you, Steve, for that introduction and to Humanity's team for producing our program every month. And of course, to the Sound Healers Association and Healing Sounds, we are grateful Uh to them and of course to all of you for to spending all of you. your precious time with us here tonight for our very uh, important sound sat song, which is uh, our fall equinox sound sat song. And it is an you, we have an international community. What a blessing! What is a sound sat song? Well, the word sound is obvious. Sat song can mean anything from a teaching to a community it has, it's a sanskrit word and it has many deep meanings and uh, we like to think that we are a community that work together ultimately for evolutionary consciousness using intentionalized sound so thank you so very very much for being with us we've got a great evening and i would love to give an overview of what we are going to be talking about tonight our main topic tonight is chakra sounds. Sounds of the chakras. We are going to be talking about chakras and sound tonight. And uh, we are also going to uh, share a wonderful portion of our program where you, each of our participants, will actually have an opportunity to balance and align and resonate your chakras through sacred sound. 
We will, of course, be doing our astrological assessment Yay. during this very powerful time. And we will end our program tonight with our guided global sound healing meditation for personal and planetary healing. Which so, maybe, from my perspective, one of the most important reasons we gather together is to collectively use our light and our love to shift and assist the vibratory field of the planet. So again, thank you. Mm, and welcome, everyone. And we'll just jump right in. And I, I'd like to start, I think most of everyone who is here tonight is probably very familiar with chakras. And of course, we're going to be focusing on sound and the chakras. But chakra is actually a Sanskrit word, and it means wheel. The chakras are spinning wheels, if you will. They are vortices of, of energy that are in our etheric field, and they're associated with different aspects of our physical body, our emotional body, our mental and spiritual bodies. And so the chakras actually, they you know, they go from the base of the spine all the way up to the crown. And we have got a lot of information about chakras that we want to share tonight. And of course, our main focus is working with sound associated with the chakras. And, and I just want to say, Jonathan, you uh, have brought so much information about the chakras, and you've done so much incredible work with chakras. I mean, we both have, but you were doing this way before I met you, and I've known you for 30 years. So tell us, Jonathan, I mean, you're a pioneer <laughs> in, in, in sound, and I think you've got a great story and how it all started for you that I'd love for you to share. Well, this one I will share because I think it's a, it really illustrates Perhaps what might have happened for a lot of people. This for me was literally, I think it was 52 years ago this month wow. at the Main Healing Arts Festival, which was a wonderful gathering of people that took place over Labor Day weekend. And I was taken there and I ended up taking a workshop with a woman named Priscilla King, who is a registered nurse, and she was head of the Maine Holistic Nurses Association. Now, I come from a family of doctors, father, grandfather, brother, all medical doctors. So I had a really, not only a well-developed left brain, but I was, shall we say, really skeptical, skeptical about any of this new age nonsense, totally. So when this workshop, literally on therapeutic touch, I took it and I was, uh, but I actually literally, first of all, began to feel the energy field. I could feel the energy fields of different people. And then I began to actually literally be able to feel the chakras. So this wasn't just a mental plane construct for me. This was something that I could feel. And as I always say, if you can experience it and feel it, then it's real. So this became very real for me. And I went back to Boston. I went to band practice with my rock and roll band. And I walked, and we were practicing a cellar, of course, basement. And uh, my bass player was there, a woman. And I said, hello, Joy, how are you? And she said, I don't feel good. And I ran my hand over her energy body. I said, oh, you've got a sore throat, huh? She looked at me and said, how did you know? I said, I could feel a disruption of your energy field around your throat. So is that clear and obvious to me? And I'm just going to suggest that one of the major reasons why we work with chakras is because if you can put your chakras into alignment, it'll oftentimes be very healing for the body mind or spirit so what a blessed thing i mean what's the purpose hey put ourselves in health and wellness right and, and jonathan i think it was actually shortly after that time that you decided to go to leslie 
uh, university to work on a master's degree and actually using sound as a transformative tool yeah. for healing. And literally, uh, I had been collecting for quite a while different documents from different people I'd studied with, corresponded with, whatnot, doctors, scientists, spiritual masters, various types of healers, and trying to collect the information about the chakras. I, and I remember I was sitting in front of the computer gathering all this information. I thought, oh, I'm going to be the first person who's going to create like an encyclopedia of uh, sound healing. You want the frequency for this chakra? Just look it up here. But lo and behold, there are a massive amount of different systems for working with the chakras. And they were not only not necessarily in alignment, a lot of them didn't agree. You'd have spiritual masters using different mantras. You'd have musicians and healers using different tones and different other things like that. And I was like, oh, my goodness gracious. And this is where I came up with the formula. Frequency plus intent equals healing. And Andy, I'm just going to jump right in uh, and say that just today I was writing about mm -hmm. that formula and how it displays the quantum principle of sound and the fact that through our consciousness, the intentionality coupled with the sound, we can manifest the reality. How did you learn about the chakras? Well, Jonathan, I came from it in a little bit different direction because of course my background is as a holistic psychotherapist. And I remember many, many years ago when I was first studying in, in working on my master's degree, I ran across the work of Carolyn Mace. Mm. And she did a lot of work with the chakras in connection to the emotions, the, you know, the different chakras, uh, you know, connected as an example, the solar plexus chakra, you know, was emotionally connected to our self-esteem and, and to our, our power. And she even said uh, intuition, you know, because we often feel things in our gut. So I, I was really tuned into uh, chakras from an emotional, psychological uh, viewpoint. And of course, what we know is that Chakras have been around, actually came into uh, the Western culture uh, back in the 1960s and 1970s. Now, chakras are from the Hindu and the Buddhist spiritual traditions, and they are thousands of years old. Uh, so it, it's not anything new. But Carolyn Mace was very innovative in the way in which she worked with chakras at that time. And she even equated the seven chakras with the seven sacraments, with the Kabbalistic tree of life. Right. And so, you know, it was really uh, an opening for me to know about these energy systems, these, these energy vortices in the etheric body that we could actually balance and align. And of course, we do that through sacred sound. And talking about that, if the chakras are the spinning, vibrating fields, then they are ultimately, they can be perceived of as being vibration. They can be perceived of as being sound. And what easier and better way to shift and affect and balance a uh, chakra than through sound? Now, here's the do. Because you mentioned that uh, probably the 60s and 70s is when the chakras really began to manifest pretty much here in the West. But in, you know, as reality, they, the seven chakra system, and there are a whole lot of different chakra systems, mm -hmm. seven chakra system seems to have come about in around the 15th century from an Indian guru. And it seems to have manifested first in the West through someone called Madame Blavatsky and the Theosophical Society. You all may be aware of that. And then uh, in the uh, Theosophical, Theosophical Society was Ledbetter, who basically wrote the first book that called The Chakras. And trying to you know track this a little further, there was a fellow by the name of Christopher Hills, who 
who in the 1970s was one of the first people to apply the colors, red, mm -hmm. orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, to the chakras in his book, you know, his, his rainbow book. Uh, and in terms of sound and the chakras, working with what we call the diatonic scale, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, do that uh, system, probably one of the people who certainly popularized it was Stephen Halpern with mm -hmm. his chakra suite. And I had some part in uh, bringing awareness of the vowel sounds, the vowel sounds to resonate the chakras. And um, in fact, if you check out vowels as mantras, I work with, I, I can actually remember that it was, it was the spring equinox of 1986, I was sort of guided to take this specific system and utilize it because it was a harmonically related system of vowel sounds. And now if you Google uh, vowels and mantras as mantras, you'll probably see this particular system that I originated as being just, it's there and God bless it. So we are all putting our contributions in. Different people have done different things. Mm -hmm. I noted Judith uh, did this whole different thing of everything from crystals and stones and whatnot. Well, and you know, there's just really been a lot of innovation that has occurred in the whole topic of chakras. And I know that, you know, uh, even some yoga postures are associated with different chakras. And as Jonathan just mentioned, we work with a seven chakra system. However, in Tibet, they work with a five chakra system. And many people work some with a, an eight, a 10, a 12, 12 22, <laughs> and on and on and on. And so there's a lot of variation with working with the chakras. But the important thing is that as we work with sound to resonate and balance our chakras, that seems to be a very uh, popular way mm of working with the chakras. I'd like to just suggest that in the 1999, I came out with an album called Chakra Chance that I know a number of you have experienced. And this was uh, literally a recording that featured, oh, probably a half a dozen different systems of working with the uh, chakras. And that included different frequencies. This one worked with the C, D, E, F, G, A, B, uh, but a harmonically related. It's a little bit different than what you uh, hear on a piano, for example. Different vowel sounds, different bija mantras, different elemental sounds, different mm -hmm. shop yoga sounds. And, you know, here's one that a lot of people don't know, but one of the original sounds, was, this is centuries old, in terms of you uh, being used to resonate the chakras, was literally doing mantras for the different specific deities that would be placed within the chakra. So that's another way of doing it. But mm -hmm. just as an overall gestalt, I'd like to suggest that chakras remain a thought form. They are, if you like, uh, based upon the consensus reality. They're fluid, they're flexible, and uh, if you work with a system that works with you, that's great. But it just, it's so interesting that it really shows, again, the quantum nature mm -hmm. of reality and how our consciousness is able to manifest things. Well, and I do want to mention that Jonathan and I actually co-authored a book called chakra frequencies and here it is come on it's a great looking cover huh <laughs> well and and we have a lot of information in that book but we do have a lot obviously on the chakras and we work with a, a specific exercise called vowels as mantra where a specific vowel sound is associated with each of the seven chakras. And then we utilize that vowel sound, which contains harmonics and the sounds can really be powerful in balancing and aligning our 
chakras and we have different systems uh in our book totally. with the with the chakras and uh just the working with either the vowel sounds the bija mantras and uh yeah and and certainly uh we work with the uh, va- uh balancing and aligning the chakras through sacred sound mm. on a monotone where which is just one note same note all the way through another way that we work with it is a diatonic scale where we will go a b uh, do re mi fa so la ti do and when we were uh uh oftentimes in our workshop we would even introduce what we would call the one minute chakra tune-up where we would just uh on one breath use a vowel sound for each of the seven chakras Now, one of the reasons that Mm -hmm. we're sharing all of this is because we are going to be giving everyone an opportunity in just a moment to literally sound with a particular vowel sound that will guide you through Mm. with each of the seven chakras, starting at the base uh, chakra all the way up to the crown. And it is called the seven minute chakra Mm tune-up and the the seven minute chakra tune-up has been around we've had millions i think jonathan millions i'm five six (laughs) seven million right now uh and, I don't know, before, so yeah. And, and I think the reason for that is because people will go, you know, hey, I can do seven minutes worth of a, a sound I experience. got a minute per chakra. I got a minute per chakra. So at any rate, uh, shortly, we're going to be introducing you to the seven minute chakra tune-up. And I mean, just as a thing, if you have experienced it, it's a great one. A lot of people... Uh, will utilize this recording, which is on YouTube and probably on the Healing Sounds website and possibly a lot of other places as well. Let's do it as a daily experience. What a Mm. blessing, Mm. because um, I think we all could take seven minutes to resonate our chakras, because once again, oftentimes we are put into a state of balance, health, coherence, and uh, Andy, yes, thank you. Here we <laughs> are. Technical oh, difficulty technical here. <laughs> things flashing on the screen. Going, what? What's that? The chakras are active right now. So we're going to be uh, watching the seven-minute chakra, and I'm going to say that before we play this, let's just take a moment, take a couple of deep breaths, and. Be aware and put our intention in there. You'll be hearing, I believe, my voice may be guiding you, but definitely like the vowel sound will come up for each of the uh, chakras. So you'll be able to sound along with me, which is a great experience, uh, if you like, because, you know, obviously making a sound and you don't have to match my pitch. It's once again, if these are, if you like, energetic consensus reality thought forms, that it's almost whatever sound that you make and that you can tap into will work for you. So with that in mind, let's just take a... Mm, Take a nice deep breath and really begin to to tune in because this is going, this experience is going to uh, give you the opportunity to bring in extra balance by resonating and aligning each of your chakras. Totally. So... If uh, Russell, our uh, video meister, is uh, ready, uh, let us uh, begin with the seven-minute chakra tune-up, and then we'll be back. First chakra. The vowel sound is uh.
second chakra. The vowel sound is oo. Third chakra. The vowel sound is O. Fourth chakra. The vowel sound is ah. Fifth chakra, the vowel sound is I. Sixth chakra, the vowel sound is A.
seventh chakra. The vowel sound is E. We should be in silence for a second. Just I know. Because <laughs> it's a, mm. I want to honor the uh, artist behind it, a woman named uh, Lorinda did the visuals. And Andy was reminding me that uh, we have the Chakra Tuner app, which is a little thing that you can uh, have in your cell phone to, uh, to take uh, with you. And it works really, really nicely. You can go up the chakras down the chakras, hang on one chakra or whatnot. So if, if, um, if you like a fun little inexpensive app, it's a lot, you know, go for that. It's uh, it's practically free and it's a, a lovely device. So thank you for yeah. letting us share that with you. And we hope that you all feel a little bit more balanced and aligned right now because we're getting ready to actually shift gears. Talking about balance. <laughs> Talking about balance is right. Uh, we are going to be doing a brief um, astrological assessment. You know, these are just overviews of what's happening astrologically, not a, a full astrological reading. But this is uh, balancing and aligning our chakras will serve us well during this time because we have had some intense energies happening on our planet astrologically. So last week, a week ago on the 17th, we actually had a full moon lunar eclipse. It was a super full moon and it was our harvest moon. And just Sunday, we had the autumnal equinox. And some astrologers are calling this a trivecta because this is something that does not happen very often where these energies will converge and ushers in very powerful energy shifts. And that's really what we are feeling right now. So I wanna uh, get into talking about the eclipse because you know the eclipses are, are are pretty powerful and, yes, and like, uh, eclipses are great because they often push us into letting go of old habits and beliefs that are no longer serving us. They're allowing us to, to step into new versions of ourselves, which is really a good thing if we can be open to that. But with eclipses, we do get extra clarity. And this clarity can really prompt us to make these necessary changes. Now, the eclipse, of course, happens on a full moon. However, this full moon was a super full moon. And that is when the moon's orbit is closest to the earth. And when that happens, the impact on our emotions and on our intentions is particularly much more profound. And this too was the harvest moon. Yikes. And the harvest moon is the symbol of completion. And I'll be talking about the equinox, which the harvest moon is the moon just prior to the uh 
fall equinox because it's so bright that in traditional times it would allow the farmers and the people to gather in all of uh, their uh, crops and prepare for the winter months ahead. And so basically, that's what we're doing here in current time. We are gathering in the fruits of our labor. We are gathering in and preparing for the winter months ahead. So it's a great time for reflection, actually. And of course, the fall equinox, we mentioned the word balance a couple of times. And uh, the fall equinox is a time where day and night are equal. And so balance is highlighted. And it's when the sun enters the sign of Libra. And the word uh, for Libra is balance. And in fact, the symbol for Libra happens to be the scale. So it really gives us a time to basically weigh in on our own lives. And let's look at our own lives and are we in balance? Are we out of balance? If we're out of balance, what do we need to do to bring ourselves back into balance? And of course, with the autumn equinox, you know, it's the seasons change. It's time for a new beginning. We actually, as we know, we begin to see the leaves falling. The days are getting shorter. As nature begins to turn inward, when we are observing and tuning into nature, that gives us the opportunity to turn inward and to reflect. Reflect on the past months and remembering, you know, what, what has gone on in these past months since the spring equinox. Or, uh, and, and also knowing that it is a good time really to pay attention to what we've accomplished, you know, what were those seeds that were planted back in the spring? You know, what have we accomplished? And what uh, do we want to process and keep and prepare for our winter coming up? So the fall of the year is a great time for reflection. It's a great time for giving thanks for all the bounty that we have so enjoyed in the summer months. It's a great time to let go of that which is no longer serving us. It is a great, great time. And it's always a great time to express gratitude and remembering always to, if we can, Look at the glass half full instead of the glass half empty Beautiful. and give appreciation for our lives on this beautiful planet of ours and send out that positive energy at every possible moment. <clears throat> so we want to wish everyone a very happy fall equinox and uh that is it for the astrological in, in this very powerful energy shifting time. Really and, powerful. And just to have this little bit of information about the astrology uh, can guide us. And as someone pointed out, some of you may be indeed in Australia, in which case, mates, Oh, that's right. You know, this is it's the a, summer. <laughs> right. This is the, this is the uh, opposite of what we've just talked about. And um, uh, there was a question real quick before we jump in. Uh, the Chakra Tuner app, I think I called it Jonathan Goldman's Chakra Tuner app. It's worthwhile. It's different than the others. Just want to share that. But hey, kids, it's time for our, it's time for my favorite activity, the Global Guided Ohm. We're going to be doing that. And um, as you all know, what happens is that Andy's loving guided meditation puts us into a state of heartbreak coherence. When that happens, 
the uh, our electromagnetic field, the lines, because our heart and our brain are aligned, and then we amplify that further, working with uh, the sound of the uh, ohm. We could be using a hum or an ah, almost anything, but we, we've been working with the ohm for a while, and uh, oh, a request, I, I will, there was a request for Andy's book again. I'm on it too, it's both of us. <laughs> Jonathan and Andy Goldman, Chakra Frequency. It's a, it's a great book. We have actually also some exercises that you can do with a partner, particularly sound exercises that you can do with a partner if you're having some difficulty, which never happens with us. No. <laughs> but I'm telling you, <laughs> it, other it, it's, it's great to make sound with somebody else if you're in a, a challenging situation. It's amazing how fast. You can show out. Oh, absolutely. But getting back to that, we are preparing now to do our global sound meditation for personal and planetary healing. And, and I do want to mention that I'll be guiding you through each step of the way, but we are going to be bringing ourselves into coherence, which probably may end up being fairly quicker than normal because we had went through the seven minute chakra too. Oh, yes. And and when we do get to the part of the meditation where we sound out loud. I think there are nine ohms altogether we're oh, going to be this doing. Time. So wherever you are, please we always Join en us. encourage you to to sound out loud with us because although we are separated through the zoom <laughs> and we're all in different physical locations on that quantum level in the quantum field we are all very connected we're all one all right so this is exciting i love this thank you for co-creating this experience with us and we'll be back russell sir The purpose for this meditation is to project a sound encoded with the energies of light and love and project healing to the Gaia Matrix, our beloved planet Earth. We will first create coherence between our heart and our brain. This effect will further be amplified by the power of the own that you will be toning along with later, bringing more light and love into your body, mind, and spirit for health and wellness. And now, begin to focus on your breathing. Breathing in and breathing out. Slowly, Breathing in and out. And as you're breathing in and out, imagine or visualize that you're breathing in and out through your heart. As you're breathing in and out through the area of your heart, remembering that it is love that breathes each breath. And it is love that causes each beat of our heart. Continue breathing slowly, breathing in and out in this manner. And now I'd like you to call to mind something that has brought you a great deal of appreciation, gratitude, something that you are feeling very good about. This might be an experience with another person. Perhaps it's a beautiful sunset. It may be a beloved pet, a spouse. But it is something that has brought you loving kindness and gratitude and appreciation. And as you're breathing in and out through your heart, feeling this appreciation, feeling this gratitude, you're creating a beautiful coherence between your heart and your brain. And your heart 
through this coherence is expanding, getting larger and larger and connecting with all the heart and loving energy on our planet in this moment. This is just a wonderful way of creating a very powerful heart activation and you'll be amplifying this with the sound of the OM. Continue breathing slowly and deeply while feeling appreciation and gratitude and imagining your breath going in and out through your heart. Now, visualize this energy and begin to sense a radiant light around you that is permeating every cell of your body and resonating your heart chakra. In a moment, we'll begin to gently sound forth with the power of the OM. And as you do this, visualize the planet Earth as a holographic image floating in front of you. Imagine bathing the Earth in a healing field of light and love that you are creating through your sacred sound. Now, let us begin to make the heart sound of the OM, bringing the energy of global harmonization, peace and healing to our beloved planet, Earth.
being in silence, visualizing all the light and love through sound that you have manifested, resonating and bringing to earth and yourself to a deep state of healing. be in silence for just a moment mm. yeah it was especially lovely tonight <sighs> mm. we heal the planet we heal ourselves we heal ourselves and we heal the planet and which reminds me that in February 14th, we have the 23rd annual World Sign Healing Day. You'll be hearing lots more about that one. We got some uh, interesting announcements to make in just a moment, but I just wanted to bring, and thank you again, because I'm a little stoned from uh, that experience, but I just would like to sort of wrap up the sound and the chakras, um, or sound of the chakras, the thing, I guess as an overall takeaway for me, I'd like to share is that ultimately after having worked with the chakras for over 50 years, they are, it's really important to remember that they're not static. They're fluid and flexible and can shift and change depending upon the thought form creations that we have with regard to them. And therefore there are so many different systems and ways that we can resonate with the chakra. And if somebody suggests one to you that doesn't work, own it. And if it does work, own it. And, you know, it may shift and change. I don't know if you, in the seven minute chakra, I saw that we had for the crown center was white, which is a color I've often liked to use myself for the crown center. And therefore we had it. So that for me was something that worked and, uh, you know, so once again, a little bit of difference, and that's okay. That's great. So I just wanted to show that. Andy, what do we got coming up oh, next month? Well, we are so very, very excited because next month uh, is the month that during the week of, of the month in October, I believe it's October 19th through the 24th. Saturday, October 19th through Thursday. The 24th. Humanities team sponsors uh, their global unity some summit global oneness summit their global oneness summit and in that summit there are many many different uh thought leaders who are going to be sharing so many uh aspects of raising our consciousness and uh it will actually I think end the, i think they're uh, 
at a hundred different uh, panels a, and there's stuff there's like that. It's many crazy. Pan- I, I just encourage everyone to tune in. And Humanities Team does this every year, and we just give such gratitude for that. But it will actually end on the Thursday night of our sound sat song so that's uh exciting that we will be able to be a part of closure for the global oneness summit through humanity and we're also doing a couple of things including a panel with the beloved lama tashi and beloved chloe goodchild and andy and i are doing one on elevating consciousness using compassion I wonder what that's going to be about. Yeah. I think it's going to be really good. So please do join us. Join so many different people. I mean, uh, I'm not not even just, if you like, Google Global Oneness Summit, and mm-hmm. it'll take you to just so mm-hmm. many different things going on. And it's really worthwhile. Humanities it's, team, yeah. we love them. Yay. Uh, and, and we do want to... Thank Humanities Team for producing our sound sat songs every month. And Russell Casales for uh, and, being <laughs> our man behind the curtain. And I also want to do a shout out to our Sound Healers Association who sponsors our sound sat song. And it is a membership organization. And our director, Nasiri Suzan, is happy to answer any of your questions or guide you in any way to become a member. And we encourage encourage that as well. And it has truly been our joy to be with everyone tonight. Oh, on, we're so grateful. Thank you, my friends. Ah. On this in very intense astrological energy. And those people in the Southern Hemisphere, you too will be feeling all of this energy as well. Of course. <laughs> and it, it's always a joy for us to be with you each month. And so do tune in next month. Thursday, October 24th. We're going to have some sort of crazy, wonderful sound satsang for personal and planetary healing. Lots of different topics. We're going to see what the spirit reveals uh, to us in the next uh, next while. How's that? Sounds like a plan. So we hope everyone will join us. And we just want to send many, many blessings of love and light through sound to everyone. And thank you for sharing a little bit of your Precious time with ha- us tonight. Happy equinox to everybody. Anybody balance an egg on the equinox? I- <laughs> they say you can do it, and I've actually seen it done. I truly have. <laughs> we, my friends, we will see you next month. Blessings of light and love through sound. Oh, lots of love. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.